Welcome to FIU Football Weekly, Week 7 in the books down. Panthers coming off a 42-34 loss at Middle Tennessee. Again, Coach Ron Turner joins me. And, Coach, uh, a game with a lot of points in this one last Saturday with the uh, Blue Raiders. Yeah, exactly right. And, and we knew it was going to be a, a tough game. You know, in our opinion, two good teams going at it. And, you know, kind of went back and forth early. Then they jumped out. And then we, we cut it down and ended up being a, a one-touchdown game. And we had the ball at the end of the game and just – you know, we got that sack with the intentional grounding, put a second and 24, and that was tough to overcome. And we still had a shot. We're still throwing it to get the ball down there. But, uh, you know, I thought our guys fought and competed, played hard, and we just made a few more mistakes than they did. And they can't do it against a good team and give them credit. They played they played very well, a very determined team. They played well, and, um, you know, we played well at times. We just made some mistakes. And it's typical FIU Middle Tennessee game where yeah. something wacky happens every time these two teams get yeah. together. Uh, it really looked like last team with the ball was going to win the way the two offenses were going up and down the field. Yeah, exactly. And, and um, you know, I was I was pleased with the way we moved the ball. We ran the ball pretty well on them against a veteran team that's big and physical inside and uh, made some plays in the passing game. So gave ourselves a chance. And, and defensively, we made some made, – you know, they moved the ball. They ran the ball on us. Um, but we also made some plays and had some big stops when we needed them and gave our offense a chance to, uh, you know, to win it at the end. So um, we just didn't get it done. Well, let's look back at uh, last Saturday in Murfreesboro, FIU Middle Tennessee. Panthers 1-4 and four there trying to get their second win in Tennessee. And this was a plus in the game, our, kick, our return game, punt and kickoff returns. We finally got Richard going a little bit and, and had a couple that we got across midfield, set up good field position for the first drive. Unfortunately, we didn't come away with points on that one. Here's another look at it. Richard had 95 yards kick returning last Saturday. And Anthony Jones with 96 yards. We'll see. We'll get a look at Anthony later. Yeah, the guys did a nice job blocking for both those guys, and they're, they're both very good returners. That was the first play of the game. Kind of anticipated a, a, some kind of pressure, a blitz. I had a tendency to do that, and Alex saw it well and got the ball to T.O. Panthers can't score, but here's the first chance for FIU. Richard Leonard with the interception. Yeah, again, obviously great field position for the offense after that return down to the two-yard line. And, uh, again, unfortunately, we had to settle for a field goal instead of a touchdown. We ran it and just it made a couple mental errors um, on the on the run plays down there and didn't give ourselves a chance to, uh, to I thought if he would have cut in there, he may have scored, uh, but I guess he was going for the pylon. Yeah, I think he was going for the pylon. Th didn't know the guy had that angle, thought he could get in. And, um, you know, it's a judgment call. Gave us the ball in the two. We should have, you know, should have been able to put seven on the board. 7-3 middle, and FIU gets it back. Late hit on John U, and the uh, ball advances for the Panthers. And, and yeah, we got a, nice, got a nice drive going going here and a nice run inside. The offense line did a good job blocking that play, and uh, Alex hit it. And here's Magoo to Gardner for the touchdown. Yeah, it was a good, good ball. Alex did a nice job getting that ball out quickly to him and uh, give Alex Gardner a chance to make the guy miss. And it was a well done, well executed play. Extra point, no good. Move ahead to the second quarter, 14-9 middle, and here's Anthony Jones with the kick return. Yeah, he, he brings good some speed back there and big play capabilities. You know, with with Richard, he trading off in there. We got two weapons back there. And here Alex is going to go downfield, and they're going to get a pass interference on middle as the defender bumped into John U. Yeah, that was a good good call on him, and, and you know, it was a play we thought had a shot. For, we had a post route in with it that we thought, you know, play action pass might give us a shot. It wasn't there, so he came off to uh, to the corner route. Magoo looking downfield here, and he's going to get Alex Gardner. Nice catch by Gardner there. Really nice catch by Alex Gardner. A little bit of a dangerous throw there. I'm not real pleased when quarterbacks throw back across their body, back across field, but that one worked out. We just got to be careful with that. Gardner down to the two, and... Nice run and a well-blocked play. Well-blocked play on the outside and by the interior of the offensive line, getting the ball in the perimeter, which we felt we needed to do against these guys. And then Alex with the touchdown here gives FIU the 16-14 lead. Yeah, it was, a, again, a well-blocked play. They, they were stacked inside, and, and Alex just bounced out a little bit to the next hole, and, and uh, we finished up with making the extra point. Midway second quarter, and here they make a mistake, a kick into Richard Leonard. Yeah, he, he did a good job, and the guys blocking for him did a nice job, and all he needs is a little bit of a seam, and if you give it to him, then he can he can do the rest, and it's, two, again, two of them we got past midfield. To the 48 of uh, Middle Tennessee, Leonard returns it here to set up the Panthers with good field position. Yeah, that's, you know, you love that in a return game. You can get big plays there. Offense has good field position. They're going to score a lot of times on it. Thomas Owens getting involved. Ten catches, 118 yards for him, and a touchdown. Yep, he's, he's playing well. He's playing really well. Had a nice play on that comeback route, and right there showed his toughness, taking a hit, 
and uh, hold on to the football. He's been doing that. He's physical. Gets it down to the two. FIU penalty come, or comes back because of the holding. And then here are the pick by Magoo. Yeah, we threw the interception. The ball was a little bit high off the fingertips of T.O. And, um, you know, it was wide open one we, I know we'd, we'd like to have back because we had an opportunity there. Move ahead to the third quarter, 28-16 middle. A little quick screen to T.O. there. Now a little screen outside to Akil Danfolio who stepped up when, when Joaquin Griner got hurt, went down. Um, Akil stepped up and made some plays for us. This was a great catch by Owens. Uh, he yeah. had to go up and he gets hit by two defenders. We'll get a look at it here. It's great concentration on the ball. He's got no fear. He'll go up and catch the ball in the crowd. And, again, big physical receiver. And Alex did a nice job throwing it in there on time. FIU settles for the field goal, 28-19, halfway through the third quarter. But the defense comes back, as we'll see on this one, and force a three and out against middle. Yeah, it was a big stop there to give us a chance to get the ball back. Uh, they got a good stop. And, uh, again, like you said, three and out made them punt, and we ended up with pretty good field position. And this the the end of the drive here. It's good coverage there. He had nowhere to go with the ball. He tried a back shoulder throw and a little bit underthrown. And, and An again, Anthony. another return by Anthony. Yeah. Down to the 43 of middle. Again, the return game set up good field position most of the day for us. And then Magoo will go to Johnu Smith. Good throw and catch there. Johnu did a nice job getting his feet down, staying in bounds. Taylor can't hit the field goal. But yep. FIU will bounce right back defensively yeah. here. Yeah, we were trying to get that field goal there to cut it to a two-score game. But fortunately, right after that, we got a turnover. Nice tackle there by Jeremiah. Knocked the ball up with his helmet right on the ball. Knocked it out and gave us good field position. And we went down and scored on that possession. Went recovers. Another look at the hit. Jeremiah with a team leading eight tackles along with Tyree Johnson and Denzel Pirine, each one of those players with eight tackles on Saturday. Yeah, secondary did a nice job of being physical, coming up out of the secondary and being physical. And you don't see that a lot of times from corners. That's a really good play by Jeremiah McKinnon right there. Gave FIU great field position, and this will lead to another FIU touchdown. Magoo will hit Dan Foti, who had a career-high six catches for 48 yards. Yeah, it was a big one there, third down, two-man coverage, pretty well covered. Alex threw a nice ball and a kill, made a nice catch on it. And then John Ooh will get it closer, and here Magoo will sneak it in. Yep, a nice sneak there. He did it on third down, didn't quite get in. I thought we were in. I don't know. I'm not sure how they didn't call it in, <laughs> so we came back with it the second time. And the penalty declined because of the touchdown, and then you're going to go for two here, and they'll find John Ooh in the back. Yeah, so nice play. It's the same play we ran earlier where we hit Alex on the touchdown. This time they covered that, and Alex Magoo did a really nice job of reading it and coming off to the number three receiver, actually. Clint Taylor getting involved, and then John O. Smith again. Tight ends are obviously uh, always a big part of, of what we do in the passing game and get them involved. And when Griner went down, again, Akil stepped up, and we continue to, to use the tight ends. Owens with his touchdown in a seventh straight game now. That's a very nice catch here. You can see pass interference. The guy's all over him. Oh, yeah. And Alex, Alex laid it out. Oh, I always tell him, keep the ball wide. We have a chance. A great concentration by T.O. That makes it 42-34. Again, the defense going to come up big in the fourth quarter with another three and out to give the offense another chance. Yeah, got the ball back for the offense. And uh, unfortunately, we weren't able to go down and put it in the end zone. Uh, but Demons did a really good job there getting a stop when we needed it. Panthers have one last chance to come back. But the drive's going to come up short, and that'll uh, wrap up the 42-34 ball game. Yeah, we kept fighting, kept fighting to the end. Unfortunately, like I said, we got that sack and uh, intentional grounding set us back, and it was it was difficult to overcome. We had a chance and just uh, didn't make the plays down the stretch. But you know, our guys played hard, and we know we got a good football team. We lost to a good football team, and we'll bounce back uh, and get ready for this one against Old Dominion. Still got five left on the yep. schedule. Obviously, the goals of a bowl are still there. Goals of a championship are still there. You know, so you just got to keep playing, I guess. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. We know, you know, it's a tough, tough schedule, tough conference. We lost that one on the road, and we come back home against Old Dominion, and we just need to focus in on ourselves and get back on track and, and get the next win. We'll take a quick break and come back and look at the Monarchs, FIU's homecoming opponent, this Saturday from FIU Stadium. Conference USA has a history of greats, but being great is not limited to athletics. Be authentic. Be determined. Be proud. Be dynamic. Be diverse. Be kind. Be a good sport. Be thankful. Be happy. Be reliable. Be genuine. Be the next great in Conference USA history. Be, Be the, the next. next. 
Welcome back to FIU Football Weekly. Lars Coot joins me this week. Lars uh, coming off the 42-34 loss at middle. Um, you know, they got 200 rushing yards. What do you think you guys could have done a little bit better defensively? Well, up front, you know, we could have put more pressure, uh, filled our gaps a little bit better, got more penetration. You know, that's what hurt us the most from watching film. It's just we didn't fill all the gaps that we were supposed to fill. We had big openings. So we had to – this week in practice, we just have to – work on that and fix that problem we shouldn't shouldn't have an issue anymore well it doesn't get any easier as far as the running game goes this week because old dominion comes in uh 38 35 loss last year up there you remember that game yeah uh ray lowry is their main running back had 142 yards last year against you guys a couple of touchdowns so i guess the focus is probably stopping the run first with yeah. old dominion that's always the, that's the, always one of our top goals to stop the run and then to get the ball that's secondary you know we were talking off camera how their quarterback situation is a little bit like last year's game at UTSA where Austin Robinson comes off the bench and provides a big running threat. It happened similar last week with Old Dominion with uh, David Washington, mm -hmm. except he throws the ball better than Robinson, threw for 365 yards and four touchdowns against Charlotte. So. You guys got to prepare for a dual threat quarterback this week. Exactly. So, you know, we got to focus on caging the quarterback and making sure that we push the pocket in the middle and we should be able to shut the, shut, him, shut down the running aspect and then get him to use his uh, throwing abilities. you played plenty of football before. Have you ever yeah. played in a game where a wide receiver comes out and plays quarterback like Washington did last week? Yeah. Uh, not, not counting Pee Wee football where everybody plays the same position. Yeah. That, um, at this level, you know, it's constant, you know, to see a dual threat quarterback. So you have to prepare for both. Um, it's not, you know, that usual for a receiver to become a quarterback, but you just have to prepare during the week and come out on Saturday to do your best. Lars is uh, currently tied for fifth on the team with 31 tackles with Tyree Johnson and third with four and a half tackles for loss and a couple of sacks. Uh, growing up, uh, you were big into karate, and you, that's something that you think – has helped you with your football career. Just tell the folks a little bit about how you got into karate and everything. Well, my dad noticed that I was, well, I played Pee Wee football as everybody did. Right. But my dad was so, well, I wouldn't say it was him. It was most of my mom. You know, she was so big on me not getting injured or something happening where it stunts my growth. So she wanted me to do something else. And I was always into, you know, karate movies, you know, Jet Li, Bruce Lee, all of them. So my dad asked me one day about karate. I decided to take it up. He noticed how stiff I was. He said it would help with my flexibility. But me going into it, I just wanted to fight. Yeah. You know, the <laughs> like kata, most kids, yeah. yeah. The katas and, you know, the different techniques and stuff, I really wasn't, you know, my mind wasn't focused on that at first. But then once I got into it and noticed how good I was, that's when, you know, I just excelled. And then I've been around, you know, the United States, different competition, different competitions. So it just... It, it, it's a, a like a something so, that anybody could do that will help you in every aspect of life. Yeah, because there's a lot yeah. of athleticism involved with karate, and and that's helped you also in football. I mean, yeah. obviously, when you're a little kid, you don't notice. Oh, you know, maybe this will help me with football. Yeah. But as you've played more and more, how has karate helped you with football? It helps you with your hand-eye coordination. It helps you, you know, focus. Help you, you know, control your emotions. You know, your mentally. Out on the field because you know sometimes your aggression can get the better of you and, you know playing a game of football that can hinder you more than actually help you so you have to be able to turn it on and off you gotta have that switch yeah a lot allows you from you know not getting that personal foul laid hit yeah. with that discipline and you're a black belt right yes correct okay and you know tell folks also i mean i was guilty of this when i first met you when you first got to fiu i couldn't pronounce your last name to save my life i yeah. was trying coat coat out, you know, explain to the folks the origin of your last name and where you're from. Well, my grandfather, he's from Norway. Mm -hmm. He uh, he moved over here. Um, uh, that's where the name originated from. Uh, I was named after my father, so you know I've dealt with that you know misconception my whole life. I got cot, coat, <laughs> everything but coot. And it, it's K O H T. Yes, but pronounced K O O O T. Yes, correct. Okay. Well, that's Lars Coot, who joins us this week. He'll be looking to get the W on Saturday against Old Dominion. We'll take a quick break and come right back with Coach Ron Turner as we look at the Monarchs. 
BYU fans, hope you're enjoying the game. Join Maddie and I each week along with Ron Thulin for the Conference USA Showcase, highlighting all teams in Conference USA as well as your Panthers. That's right, a new show premieres each week, so check your local listings Wednesday through Saturday for all the latest news, highlights, and features surrounding all things Conference USA. Welcome back to FIU Football Weekly. This week, the Panthers have Old Dominion for homecoming. FIU has had some memorable games in homecoming, and you'll learn more about that later in the show. Uh, Coach, last year, a wild one up in Norfolk, 38-35, with the Monarchs coming out on top. A lot of that had to do with Taylor Heineke, their quarterback. He's with the, well, he's with your brother now, yeah, Minnesota exactly. Vikings, <laughs> yeah. uh, with Norv. Uh, but they're still, uh, I guess, a formidable team. They came back and rallied against Charlotte last week. 37-34. Yeah, they're, they're a good team. They have a good mix of um, youth and experience. They're experienced in some positions. They're young in other. They're, the key thing, though, they're very athletic Real, on both sides of the ball, very athletic. Um, the young guys on, on defense, very extremely athletic and quick. Going to present some problems there for us. And, again, they mix with some seniors. Offensively, they can run the ball. They spread you out. They want to run the ball but they complement it with a very good passing game. So they can, they can beat you either way. Last week they fell behind by two or three scores, made a change of quarterback. He came in through for well over 300 yards and um, had a nice comeback um, win last week. So it's going to be a tough challenge. You're a good football team, well coached, and very athletic. Their main offensive player from last year that's still back, Ray Laurie, their running back, had 142 yards, a couple of touchdowns against FIU last year. Uh, a back, obviously, you got to be focused on stopping. Yeah, he's he's a very good player, and they use a couple other running backs in the mix and tr and rotate him in there to keep him fresh. But he's second leading rusher in the conference, so um, he, he's a good player. That's where it's all going to start. We have to stop the run. We didn't do a very good job of that last week, and uh, we've got to stop the run this week, and uh, everything goes from there. And quarterback wise, I guess you got to prepare for both guys. Uh, they brought in David Washington to replace Schuler Bentley last week. Uh, we were talking off camera how it's maybe a little bit of UTSA where. You know, you didn't expect the guy to come in, but now you've seen him one game against Charlotte. Yeah, and he's very athletic, and, you know, we're assuming he's going to be the guy they start. Right. They brought him in and gave a spark to that team and a big come, come from behind win. Um, he can beat you with his feet, very athletic, very fast, but he's also can throw it, throwing it for over 300-something yards. So, I mean, big play type guy with his feet and with his arms. So it's going to be a big challenge for us, and we don't have a lot of film on him to, right. to study, so it's really one game. He, he was, started the game at wide receiver played the first three or four plays at wide receiver and ended up going to the quarterback. You, what did you see from, from them defensively? I know they had a tough stretch where they lost to NC State, App State, and Marshall one, a combined 114-21. to 21. Those are three good teams. Well, what have you seen from the Monarchs defensively? Well, I see a team that, again, they're, they're, they've got some youth. They've got some young guys playing, and I see them, they've gotten better each, each week. And I think see them playing much better right now in a very athletic team. So they're good in the secondary. Got some corners back um, and safeties back from a year ago. And uh, the biggest thing, like I said, is they're athletic. Well, we'll step aside for a moment and take your questions from on Twitter for Coach Ron Turner after this. At Conference USA. Let's be the definition of a good sport. Conduct and attitude. Considered as befitting. Participants in sports. Especially fair play. Courtesy. Striving. Spirit. Conference USA. Has a history of good sportsmanship. Enjoy the game. And be our next good sport on and off the field. FIU hosts Old Dominion on Saturday for a homecoming. Throughout its history, FIU has had some memorable homecoming games. In 2005, the Panthers got their first ever win on a last second field goal to defeat Western Kentucky 38-35. Adam Moss had the winner. In 2008, T.Y. Hilton produced the Hilton Heave, a last-minute game-winning touchdown pass to defeat Arkansas State 22-21. Two years later, Hilton had four touchdowns and the game-saving tackle in double overtime as FIU defeats ULM 42-35. Welcome back to FIU Football Weekly. Time for our weekly Q&A with Coach and your questions. As always, if you want to get your question to Coach, you can tweet me at Pete Pellegrin, and we'll get that on the show for next week. Coach uh, George wants to know, uh, why was Middle able to run so well on Saturday, and can we expect any changes defensively with personnel for uh, this Saturday? 
Well, George, yeah, I mean, we didn't want them to run the ball like they did, obviously, and they're a good team. We knew it was going to be a challenge. They've got a bunch of good backs, and they went with a guy that hadn't really played much this year because a couple guys were hurt, and he's a very strong physical runner, and the offensive line is good and experienced and did, did a good job, did a good job blocking us. We didn't do, at times, didn't do as good enough job of getting off blocks and making some plays. And, um, yeah, you know, we're going to look at our personnel. We don't have a whole lot of options because right. we're playing – we're playing who we have. We're a little banged up at linebacker and banged up in a couple places. Got some young safeties in there. But, you know, we just got to do a better job of, of, you know, getting off blocks, playing with better pad level, and um, attacking our gaps and, and penetrating a little more than what we did. Matt uh, wants to know, why don't we run a faster tempo offense? It seems to work in our favor when we do that. Yeah, I totally agree, and, and we did, actually. We, we were a lot of no huddle, a lot of up-tempo. Not just no huddle, but up-tempo during the course of this game. I think it's something Alex is very comfortable with, and uh, we, we did the majority of the game. You know, we went up-tempo the majority of the game. Not the whole time. We tried to change up our tempos, right. but we did go up the line and, and go pretty much up-tempo majority of it. Okay, and our final question from Andres. He wants to know, will we be using Anthony Jones primarily as a running back, or will we see him more at receiver? Uh, he says that I think we he can make some plays happen at receiver. I think he can make plays anywhere. Yeah, he can make plays anywhere. He makes some kickoff return and all that. So I think you must have been sitting in our staff meetings because we <laughs> definitely have to get him involved more. We've been saying have that. You we a haven't coach done it. Andres? Yeah, he <laughs> might been. He might have been in there. <laughs> And we have, uh, you know, we got to use him. You yeah. know, we got to get him in there more. And we, he's at running back primarily right now, and that's where he's going to stay. But we're going to do some things, put him in a slot, and do some different things with him. We've got to, we've got to continue to get him more involved. Well, that'll do it for this week. FIU takes on Old Dominion this Saturday, six o'clock, FIU Stadium. No TV. You can watch it on PantherVision at FIUSports.com. Until next week, for Coach Ron Turner, this is Pete Pellegrin, wishing you a good week.